So recently I was on uh, social media and a friend of mine posted something along the lines of stop watching your YouTube videos on 2x, here's a life hack, get a copy of the transcript, put it into ChatGPT and get yourself a summary. And so essentially I wanted to just build this out, but do it all in code. So automate that whole process. So given just a YouTube link, automatically extract the audio, automatically get a transcript, pass that to ChatGPT and get yourself a summary of this video. So this is what I'm going to be going through in this whole video is how do we build this actual pipeline? And so here's a bit of a schematic of the, how it works. And I'll be sharing this uh, notebook. In fact, you'll find a link in the description below. So first things first, find yourself a YouTube video. Doesn't matter how long it is. Uh, I'll explain that shortly, but find yourself a YouTube video. We're then going to extract the audio. We're going to use something called YouTube DL. It's a known uh, audio extractor for YouTube. And luckily for us, it has a Python binding. We're then going to chunk this audio. So depending on how long your audio actually is, you may want to separate it into smaller bits. And this is what we're going to do in this code as well. So, you know, suppose you have a video that's two hours long, that might actually be too long for these models to handle. So you just chunk it up and you do it in smaller bits. We then use an open AI model that was actually open sourced a few months ago, but recently added to their API. It's called Whisper, and this essentially does speech to text. So once we have our bits of audio, each little chunk of audio, we can then uh, turn it into text, essentially, into these text files. And we're going to use those to then pass that to ChatGPT, and it's going to summarize the key points for us. And so once we close this entire loop, you can then see that we have we go from this video to like the key points in the video. So now in this whole pretty much next uh, few minutes, I'm going to show you all the code and explain to you how it works. OK, so first of all, um, the dependencies that you need, there aren't that many. OK, so I'll list them all here. So Librosa, this is kind of a popular Python library for doing any kind of audio manipulation. OpenAI, we're going to be using their API to actually run most of these models. Soundfile, this is really just to be saving some of the models and the YouTube DL. So that's the, the framework that allows us to actually download these videos. And finally, you know, you need a valid, valid OpenAI API key to run all of this. So uh, first things first, let me just make sure I'm in the proper kernel. Uh, I think that I am. Hopefully I have all these things installed. Okay. Uh, well, let's see. If it doesn't, it'll yell at me a bit later on, but so far, so good. All right, so here's a little bit of a utility function. We're going to be using this in a bunch of uh, different functions later on. This is kind of useful. It just, given a directory or a path, it just lists all of the files with the given extension. So here we're working in MP3s, and given a directory, a root directory, I want to be able to get out all of the names of the audio files in there. And this is useful in the case of when you're chunking, so you can get all your chunks back relatively easily. Okay, so just run that. Uh, next, we need to actually download this YouTube video. So here we're using the YouTube DL library, and it has a bit of a Python blank plugin. It's a bit janky, so I had to do a bit of a hack here. So what happens is when you first set the download, it throws an error every time. Like, I don't know if it's just because of the version I'm using or something with my, my computer, but every time I hit the first download, it throws this download error and it saves some temporary files in the meantime. So if you just rerun it once again, it works. So this is like a really ugly hack, but essentially running this function once will make sure that you get the audio and it'll return the actual audio file name afterwards. Um, okay, so the next thing that we wanna do is we actually wanna chunk this audio. So why do we care to chunk the audio? It's just like, if the file is too long, you want to chunk it so that you can actually give it into smaller bits to open AI so that you don't run out of memory and they don't give you a, an error in their API. So here you just define how long you want this to be in seconds and you can save everything into an output dir. So essentially we load the audio file, we chunk it up and we save it into many smaller uh, files afterwards. So yeah, relatively straightforward code here, essentially load it using Librosa. So here you can see this line here, load using Librosa, uh, get the actual duration in seconds of the clip. Then we find out how many actual segments do we have. And then for each one of these segment segments, just chunk it. Okay, so get the start index, get the end index. Of course, you have to use this uh, SR variable. So that's the sampling rate. So this is just like a little bit of how sound actually works. Um, and for each segment, write it to a file called segment underscore index. So this index here, you know, segment 0.mp3, segment 1.mp3, and just return them in order. 
Okay, so next we wanna actually transcribe the audio. So to do this, we're gonna be using this Whisper One model. That's the one that's available on the API. I just put this as a parameter if in case one day it kind of changes or something. So the way that it works, we just go through each one of our audio files. Uh, and for each one of the audio files, we send that to OpenAI, we get the response and we append the text to our transcripts list right here. Uh, at the end of it, if you did specify an output file, you may want to save these so you can cache them for later on. Uh, it'll save them to an output file. Otherwise, it'll just return you the list of strings of the transcripts for each one of these different chunked audio files. So remember, we chunked the audio files before and here we just send them through. All right, now that we have our chunked uh, files, we then need to summarize each and every one of these chunks. So each one of these chunks is essentially a string, and this is the raw transcript. So whatever words that were said in the video. So for each one of these chunks, we then send that to OpenAI to do a completion. And you can see here, I don't actually put the prompt, and you'll see why a bit later on. It's actually useful to be able to define the prompt at different points in time, because we're gonna be using the summarize function twice. So the reason we're gonna be using it twice is because at first the summary is a bit too long. So like if you can't even be bothered to read all of the lines in the summary, you can summarize again. So I just wanted to have two different prompts for each different summary. So here we're passing system prompt here as an actual variable. And so if we go through it for each chunk, get the response, uh, get the actual content and text. This is just like the data structure that OpenAI sends back. So extract the actual text from this and append this to our summaries list. And again, if you do want, you don't have to, but if you do specify an output file, it'll save this all to the output files. Um, so let's just, did I run this one? I don't even remember. Let's just run this one for good measure. And I'll run this next cell as well. And finally, we put it all together, okay? So here I just put a bit of a nice convenient wrapper function. Really the only thing we care about is the actual URL to the YouTube video and the output directory. So here you can see like I'm defining a whole bunch of different um, outputs to given our output directory. So let's say you wanna save everything into a folder called outputs. The raw audio will go into a raw audio folder. The chunks will go into a chunks folder, the transcripts, etc. The segment length here, you know, pick and choose. Uh, right now I'm pick, I'm limiting it to 10 minute segments. I think 10 minutes, you know, it depends how people, how fast people speak, but this should be well under the like 3000 ish words you could pass to chat GPT. Or if you, you want to use GPT for now you could pass almost 6,000 words. Um, really depends up to you. You know, you could play around with this variable. I just left it to 10 minutes. That seemed to work for me, especially for videos that were less than 10 minutes then I don't have to chunk it. Like the chunking will essentially be a chunk of one. And so the entire context will be within one prompt and that just tends to make things a little bit better. So here, you know, if the output stir already existed, we just delete it. Uh, we don't wanna have to deal with the fact that we might be doing other things. So if you care to save it, just change the name of the output directory and uh, you can make a new output. Oh, and in fact, this is a bit of a bug here. Uh, we would wanna create this called output stir. So let me just change that right there. Okay, so first things first, you know, you download the video um, using the YouTube to MP3 function. So remember that this actually uses YouTube DL. This gives us the audio file name. We then uh, can use this audio file name to go chunk our audio. Okay, so here we go and we chunk the audio. If it's a relatively short video, it, the chunks really won't change anything. It's more if you have longer videos, then these chunks start to matter. And so now uh, we can also define the segment length which was defined up here and where we want to save these chunks. All right, next we transcribe everything. And this is where uh, once we got these transcriptions back from our transcribe function, we have our system prompt. Okay, so the system prompt says, you're a helpful assistant that summarizes YouTube videos. You're provided chunks of raw video, uh, of raw audio that were transcribed for the video's audio. Summarize the current chunk to succinct and clear bullet points of its contents. You know, not some fancy prompt engineering, but actually turns out it does the trick pretty well. So here you can ask it to summarize your transcriptions. And then, you know, I noticed that these prom these uh, summaries were already quite verbose. So I just added this TLDR prompt. So again, uh, thank you, helpful assistant, summarizing our YouTube videos. And here I'm saying someone has already summarized the videos to key points, summarize the key points, the one or two sentences that capture the essence of the video. So. You know, we're just summarizing the summary. And then at the end of this whole thing here, we return the long summary and the short summary. So these are both strings that we're returning. 
Um, so I already ran this before, but now I'll run this again. This shouldn't take very long, um, but this is for the, the, the five minute video. So here, let me run this and then we can actually go check out which video I'm trying to summarize. So here I run this and here it says, you know, uh, downloading from this page, the error we can ignore. So here, let's go see this video, you know, why you should stretch. Obviously it has no context from the uh, images themselves. Here we have an athlete preparing for a game. But yeah, this is, put on their you know, we don't actually care to listen to this video. That's the whole point. We, we just want to know what comes out of it. So you can see it's still thinking here. Um, this video, obviously it's going to be missing all the image content. So this will work best on, um, on videos that have a lot of audio, ideally one to two people speaking. It really won't take in sound effects into account. So yeah, try to limit this. Like this tool should probably be targeted just to videos where you have people speaking because Whisper will only give you text. I really don't think that it'll do some fancy closed captioning that says like people clapping or people cheering or whatever. So it looks like it's done. Uh, let's go check it out. So, you know, here you can see I get the long summary, the short summary, and I have it spit it all out at the end. So ignore those. So those errors, by the way, those are for you wondering, this is that ugly hack I was talking about with YouTube DL. Uh, it gives you an error, you see error giving up after zero fragment retries. No idea what that even means, but you run it again and then it works. Honestly, I tried to find uh, stuff on Google uh, about these errors. Someone just said it looks like a YouTube server error. That's why I ran it again and then I saw it was working, but then it was happening every time on the first time. Anyway, I really didn't care too much to go into this. If someone can figure out a way to get around this on YouTube DL, you know, go ahead and help them out. Like maybe put, make a pull request or something and help us fix this, fix this tool. For now, that's the only thing I found. And then there's all the logs of everything. So, you know, here we just chunked it to one chunk. We're chunking to 600 segments, converting the eye, whatever, like summarizing. And then it prints out these long summaries and short summaries. So the longer summary says, stretching before physical activity can prevent muscle injuries, two kinds of stretching, dynamic and static. Uh, this is way too long. Let's get a TLDR and here's the TLDR. So stretching is a helpful tool to prevent muscle injuries when done correctly. And there are two types of stretching, dynamic and static. Comprehensive stretching regimen for at least 10 minutes a day or two a month can permanently improve flexibility, increase pain thresholds and create lasting changes to the brain. So the reason I picked this video is because I'm actually really bad at stretching and lately I've been having a lot of muscle pain. So I'm really hoping that this is gonna, you know, <laughs> gonna, uh, gonna help me help myself and start stretching. So yeah, I mean, this is essentially all the outputs and then we can go check out maybe in a, in a finder window. So let me just open my finder over here. Um, let me get it to the actual thing. So you know what, let's, let's open it straight from the window here. Um, in the outputs and let's just open a finder window right there. Okay. So you see, we have the summary here, it's plain text file, transcripts.txt, plain text file, the raw audio and the chunks. So everything sort of gets saved neatly in here. Uh, then I was kind of curious to see how this would work on longer form videos. So I did this for our, an even longer form video. Um, let's open it. So this is a conversation that I was actually meaning to listen to. I haven't had the time to listen to this yet. So this is kind of like the perfect test for this. And you can see it's 47 minutes long and it's actually two people talking. So I was actually kind of curious as well to see how this would handle two people talking, seeing as the transcriptions itself would not say who's talking and when. So let's go take a look at that summary. Summaries are at the end. And here, let me just expand on this. So ignore these stupid errors. So here's the long summary. And yeah, let's just go through some of these talking points. I mean, maybe for another time we can actually like talk about these things, but AI alignment with smarter models. Uh, uh, so he, this is the summary, right? We're talking about AI alignment with smarter models and avoiding misrepresentation. That's a challenge. Uh, Microsoft has been a good partner for open AI. Future of AI is a collaboration between human and machines. Yeah, we, <laughs> we really hope so. Going multimodal, multimodal is a fruitful direction for improving AI. As you can see, lots of different talking points. And then here's the TLDR because we don't have time for that. So co-founder and chief scientist of OpenAI discusses a variety of topics, including AI alignment, economic value, reliability, and the future of AI as a collaboration between humans and machines. They acknowledge the difficulty of achieving alignment with models smarter than us and the potential for illegal or malicious uses of AI. So this is clearly an important conversation. I find this 
really fascinating. I'm probably gonna go listen to this, but if I didn't have the time, well, here's my TLDR. So yeah, that's it for this video. Uh, hope you liked it. Let me know if you have any other ideas for some uh, hacks we could put together using all these models. And thanks for watching.